Allah Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Happy Savior's Day and welcome everyone, family, beautiful faces, beautiful community, beautiful history. And uh, I'm enjoying myself so much sitting down here. And, and, and uh, as Imam Elam, such an a, a open spirit or, or innocent soul, you know, how Imam Muhammad you, was expressing to us in his last days how uh, God wants us to come back to the nature of like little babes. And uh, when I hear Imam Elam, when uh, we were first, he's also, he's a warrior, you know, so alhamdulillah. He's a, he's a tough man. He, Imam Rasul can, can tell you, can tell you more about him as far as be, being so tough. But he, so he came in with that spirit when my father passed and he wanted to help me. I don't know if he saw that I, I needed help more, but he, his soul sensed it, he registered his in, 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 intellect and he de, devoted himself into supporting us and helping us. And uh, and I reflect when he's talking, how he used to always tell me, you know, oh, that's you know, is everything okay? Uh, did I do that okay? And he would mention it as his uh, his nephew, his uh, part of himself that's self-accusative, you know. And uh, you know, I said, well, you don't have, have to make those excuses. And I said, I kind of fell for him. And I said, well, he puts pressure on himself, you know. But he, ha he handles it well, because when you have a big heart, the more you can handle where heavy burden on a lot of people is real light. And I tell you, like I told you back then, that uh, I feel exactly the same way about you as when I, when I first told you, I said that, Imam Elam, I said, coming from you, I said, I know that you can, it's impossible for you to do anything wrong. If somebody came to me and told me Imam Elam did something wrong, I wouldn't believe him. I'd be ready to fight him first. Come to lie, because it is not in him. It is not in him to do anything malicious. He gives all of himself, 100 percent. And I'm sure his family here to bear witness. You know, I'm the lie. Not, not, not the children, because they, they probably got a little spankings when they was babies. But the, the mature, like his daughter here, she'll tell you, he's a good man. He's a real sincere and honest and decent man. And um, Imam Muhammad used to say that the path of truth is God's path. That's why as Muslims we accept people of different faiths as being guided by Almighty God Allah. That, uh, you know, our, our religion is for the believers, not just for the Muslims. And I heard Imam, all of this wisdom, this, I'm looking at um, my sister Kashmir here. Uh, you still, your name is uh, still Kashmir? Yeah, okay, because I, I was hearing another name. I was hoping I, you didn't change your name, so alhamdulillah. We like family. Uh, there, her parents, uh, Brother Henry and Sister Zelly were role models to us, always working. We were small children. And uh, I always tell people, I don't know how many of it was, us it was, but it seemed like uh, maybe two or three hundred of us at any given time would be on the property of the... Um, the, the masjid or the mosque at that time, Masjid Anu Elijah Muhammad at that time. And we were one big happy family, like the sister was telling you, uh, aunts, uncles, grandparents. Your parents, you didn't, you didn't, your parents didn't have, your parents were always present. They didn't have to be in your face because someone else was doing their job and doing it beautifully. They accepted all of us like that we were their children from their own loins. And there's a great miracle and a great mercy from Allah for us to have experienced that. And I used to wonder, one of the, this is something that we should consider. Uh, I probably said this before, that our youth, that the loss of that environment is, uh, had such, uh, was such a great deep loss for the youth. You know, we, you all, most of you all were young adults, you know, and it was hard on you all, but the young people, we lived in a world to itself where our future was laid out. If we wanted to be a doctor, a lawyer, or a school teacher, or whatever, there was a place in our community, in the, in the Muslim community, we were talking about building hospitals, we had farms, we had representation all, as far as we knew, all over the globe. We had representation outside of America. And so we saw ourselves as being uh, uh, leaders. So one of the most saddest and uh, most uh, 
kind of, uh, the, I don't know the language to use, the dejecting things to do. I saw a movie a long time ago where a guy went to be, he was like a spoiled king or something of a, uh, might have been China or something, and he went from being this pampered ruler to being a prisoner and an inmate. And it would just uh, totally just destroy the person that he was. Uh, but people of faith, we, um, we, have, we have faith so we don't go through those trials. But a lot of our youngsters uh, experience a similar trial. If you don't have the faith and the trust in God, then whatever knowledge you have, once that knowledge is defeated, you're destroyed as a human being. So a lot of our children out here lost uh, in a worse condition than they've ever been. Uh, so alhamdulillah, I didn't mean to take it in that direction. Uh, it's the truth, but uh, it's all it's all in the in the in the in, the prop, in perspective with uh, uh, subject here. And when you have uh, faith and trust in Allah, you want to do your best and uh, at all times. So when my when my father passed, I said, "Well, I know I'm a human being, and Allah doesn't want us to carry burdens that we're not able to handle." So I said, I have to have faith, and I have to believe in that either. So I trust Allah, and I try to put my best foot forward. And I said, how am I going to manage Imam Muhammad's office while he's not here? And how can I live up to uh, what I've heard my entire life? You know, could you imagine putting a child on the playground with all of his buddies, you know, of all different ages, they're out there ripping and running and having a good time. And then you pull one of them to the side and say, you know you have to set the example here. And I ain't even the oldest. On the, I could see if I was the oldest. That's what I heard my whole life. We walking down in the hallway, going to lunch, talking to stuff. Somebody pulled me say, you know you, ma'am, son. You, you know, you're you going to take after your father, right? You're going to take your father's place. In it. So... You know, I, I usually usually it just struck fear, and I would you know kind of just look, and I might nod or whatever. But then, as I got older, I learned that this was coming deep from a deeper place in the people that was in the community. That not only did was that they desire for me to help my father in the future, but it was coming from some something much deeper and and a, a place in their soul where. Uh, they needed, to, they needed to know that Imam Muhammad would produce a son. And uh, we know Imam Muhammad used to teach us uh, that the, it's, it's the Quran that says that it's no good that is done, uh, is set forth that shaitan, the enemy of mankind, doesn't try to reproduce or create the like of. So, uh, so we know that the fabric of the society is the family. And the enemy of the human family uh, knows that if he can destroy the family and take the father out, that's one of the things that inspired me to um, to do that. Because I have a lot, of, I have a lot of burden on me, and I'm really, you know, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but it's a miracle that I, I'm able to manage the things that I have. Allah blessed me with a wonderful family, wonderful uh, believers that sincerely loved and supported Imam W. D. Muhammad, whom. It's not in me to put any burden on them. It's, it's, it's my desire to want to serve them and help them. And uh, it, it brought tears to my eyes uh, when one time a, a brother, when these acts of charity and kindness happened, because you don't, Allah said, zakat or charity is for those who ask for it and also for those who don't. So I have to be careful what I ask for or what I express openly. But as the president of the mosque cares, you know, I have to ask. But it's the sincere believer that uh, at, see you ask for something. If it's in their means and their reach, they don't hesitate. They go and get it for you. And Allah shows you these beautiful signs to strengthen your faith. It was on one day we needed some things to, for the renovation of the mosque cares. And uh, I happened to be meeting a brother on a totally different meeting, uh, our secretary, actually. I, I told him I... He's going to get tired of me putting him out here like that. It was, it's too late. I'm putting him out here. He was also our man of the year. That this brother is such a soldier that he reminds me of myself where my prayer to God was that I continue to witness the miracle that he was doing uh, on us as a people under the leadership of Imam W.D. Muhammad. Because I said, I can't ask for What could I ask for more? I'm like, every time I look up, there's something wonderful happening to our community and through the leadership of Imam Muhammad. So I said, I just want to continue. This is my heaven. It's just so I would say, where is Imam now? Where's, have you seen my dad or what's he doing now?